Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so in this video, it's going to be a short tips and tricks on how you can increase the speed of your data science workflow particularly when you're finding your coding problems by Googling. And if you want to speed that up, then stay tuned. And so without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the codegrepper.com. And what Grepper essentially does is it allows you to easily access relevant coding answers when you're Googling or when you're in websites that contain code examples. So let's start by installing Gripper for Chrome by click on this button. But because I already have it, it's going to show remove from Chrome. But in your case, click on the install Chrome. Okay, and after you install it, then let's give it a test run. So what you want to do is head over to Google. So let's say that you want to search for scikit-learn. And you want to build a decision tree. Okay, and so we're going to click on the first link. Okay, and so let's say that you like this example and you're scrolling down to find the code and you want to save this into your own project. So what do you do? So natively, you would copy the code and then find your favorite text editor and then paste that code inside, right? But is there a quicker way to do that? Yes, there is. So by using the grepper extension, so what you can do is you notice that there is the code prompt here. And so Grepper will conveniently allow you to see only the code input by hiding the prompt and the output. Notice that there's a grayish button here at the top. Click on that. And so you're going to see only the code input. So you want to highlight the code input here. And so if you are on a Windows operating system, you want to type control G. And notice that the black box here contains the code that you have highlighted just a moment ago. And notice that at the top, it says that this is the answer, the gripper answer to the question, scikit-learn decision tree. Oh, I noticed that there's a typo here. Okay, but nevertheless, the search problem is scikit-learn decision tree. And the answer will be here. And you want to save the gripper answer. And then you want to access your saved answer by clicking on the gripper icon here at the top right and click on the My Code Answers. And so this is the latest save of the code answer. And notice that on the left, it will be the search term. And on the right, it will be the code answer. Okay, and you also can specify which programming language this one is. And then click on the Save Edit. But notice that I have a typo here. And so ideally, this will work if I type in the exact same query for the next time. Okay, and notice that the code answer that I have just saved just a moment ago is displayed here. And so the second time I'm searching, which is right now, I'm seeing this code answer from the Grepper extension. And so not only me, but other users of Grepper will also see this code answer as well. Okay, and so other users can give this a upvote or a downvote if it helps or not help their code problem. So what you're saving is not only useful to you, but it's also useful to other users of the Gripper extension. And so we could think of this as like a crowdsourcing effort whereby each coder will essentially have a coding problem. And when they Google for their coding problem and they found the relevant answers, they will give it a save, right? And then the second time around, when someone encounters the same problem, they will see this at the top of their search result. And then they could give it an upvote or a downvote, depending on whether it helps or not help their coding problem. And so imagine that over time, more coder are using Grepper and more answers are accumulated in the database. And so that would subsequently help coders to work more quicker by being able to find relevant answers in a quicker manner. And so if you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on data science. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one.
But in the meantime, please check out these videos.